So we will be discussing Hirsutism guideline as per the endocrine society, and we will also discuss the Oxford uh, Handbook of uh, Endocrine uh, and Metabolism. So first of all, just to overview the endocrine society uh, guidelines, and according to the there that it, it is suggested to test for the elevated androgen levels for all women with an abnormal hirsutism score. And in those cases where the serum total testosterone are normal and sexual hair growth is moderate or severe, or sexual hair growth is mild, but there's a clinical evidence of hyperandrogenic endocrine disorder, like the menstrual disturbance or progression in spite of the therapy, they suggest measuring an early morning serum total and free testosterone by a reliable specialty assay. Then they suggest screening hyperandrogenic women for the non-classic con congenital adrenal hypoplasia due to 21 hydroxylase deficiency by measuring early morning 17 hydroxy progesterone in the follicular phase or on the random day for those with amenorrhea or infrequent menses. In her suit patients with a high risk of congenital adrenal hyperplasia, like those patients with a positive family history, member of the high risk ethnic groups, they, it is suggested that screening should be done even if the total and the free testosterone levels are normal. Then they uh, recommend that uh, they do not recommend uh, testing for the elevated androgen levels in eumenoric women with unwanted local hair growth, like in the absence of an abnormal hirsutism score because of the low likelihood of identifying a medical disorder. Treatment of hirsutism in premenopausal pre women as per the endocrine society guidelines. For most patients with, uh, with patient important hirsutism, despite cosmetic measures, it is suggested to start with a pharmacological therapy. For women who then desire additional cosmetic benefit, they suggest adding direct um, hair removal methods. However, women with mild hirsutism and no evidence of endocrine disorders, they suggest either approach. For hirsute women with obesity and those with a polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, it is suggested that they should change their lifestyle. Pharmacological treatments, initial therapies for majority of the women with hirsutism or not seeking fertility, oral contraceptive uh, contraceptives, contraceptives are recommended as the initial treatment uh, for those patients. Then for most women with heart surgery, uh, anti-androgenic monotherapy as the initial therapy uh, can be uh, recommended unless these women use adequate contraception for women who are not sexually active and have undergone permanent sterilization or who are using long acting reversible contraception, um, it is recommended to use either OCPs or the anti androgens as the initial therapy. The choice between these options depends on the patient preference regarding the efficacy, side effects, and the cost. And uh, they do not recommend one oral contraceptive pill over another as the initial therapy, as all OCPs appear to be equally effective for hirsutism and the risk of side effects is low. For women with hirsutism at a high risk for venous thrombolism, like those who are obese or over the age of 39 years, it is suggested that initial therapy with OCPs containing the lowest effective dose of ethanol estradiol, usually 20 mcg, and the in a low risk and, and a low risk progestin is indicated. If uh, patient important hirsutism remains despite six months of monotherapy with OCPs, they suggest adding antiandrogen. So at least six months of therapy of OCPs should be given. And uh, endocrine society do not suggest one antiandrogen over another. However, the society recommends against the use of flutamide because of its potential hepatotoxicity. For all pharmacological therapies for uh, hirsutism, the society suggests a trial of at least six months before making changes in the dose, switching to a new medication or adding medication. In patients with severe hirsutism, causing emotional uh, distress, and those women 
who are using OCPs, uh, who have used OCPs in the past and have not experienced significant sufficient improvement. Uh, the society suggests initiating combination therapy with OCPs and antiandrogens. However, the society suggests against combination therapy as the standard first line approach. Other therapies include uh, the society suggests against uh, using insulin lowering drugs for the sole indication of treating hirsutism. And the society recommends against using gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist, except in women with severe forms of hyperandrogenemia, such as the ovarian hyperthicosis, who have suboptimal response to OCPs and antiandrogens. And the society recommends against the use of topical anti-androgen therapy for the use of hirsutism. Direct hair removal methods for women who choose hair removal therapy, the society suggests photoepilation for those whose uh, unwanted growth is auburn, brown, or black, and they suggest electrolysis for those with white or blonde hair. For women of color who choose photoepilation, uh, they suggest using a low, long wavelength long pulse duration light source. And women who desire more rapid response to photopilation, uh, they suggest adding inflornithine topical cream during the treatment. So now we will briefly overview the uh, Oxford Handbook of uh, Endocrinology. And according to that, uh, hirsutism is basically excess hair growth in female as a result of uh, increased androgen production and increased sensitivity to, to androgens. Physiology of hair growth before puberty, the body is covered by fine unpigmented hair or villous hairs. During adolescence, antiandrogens converts villous into coarse pigmented terminal hairs in the androgen dependent areas. The external of the extent of the terminal hair growth depends on the concentration and duration of androgen exposure, as well as on the sensitivity of the individual hair follicle. Idiopathic hirsutism refers to those with normal investigations and presumably greater than average androgen receptor sensitivity. The reason different body regions respond differently to the same androgen concentrations unknown, but may be related to the number of androgen receptors in the hair follicle. Genetic factors play an important role in the individual sensitivity to the circulating androgens as evidenced by racial differences in the hair growth. So now the androgen production in women. In uh, women, testosterone is secreted mainly by the ovaries and the adrenal glands, although a significant amount is produced by the peripheral conversion of the androgen dione and DHEA. So basically, these are the ovaries and the adrenal glands which produce the make, which produce uh, the testosterone uh, in the majority of the women. Ovarian uh, androgen production is regulated by the tonizing hormone, whereas adrenal production is ACTH dependent. So for ovaries, it is <coughs> LH, and for uh, adrenal production, it is ACTH. The predominant androgen produced by the ovaries are testosterone and androstenedione, and the adrenal glands are the main source of DHEA. Circulating testosterone is mainly bound to sex hormone binding globulin and is a free testosterone which is biologically active. Testosterone is converted to dihydrotestosterone in the skin by the enzyme alpha directase, androstenedione, and DHEA are not significantly protein bound. So overall, PCOS accounts for around 95% uh, of the hirsutism in uh, case of ovarian origin, while um, less than 1% is produced because of the androgen secreting tumors from the ovaries, and uh, less than 1% from the, uh, less than 1% of hydrotism is because of the congenital CH, Cushing syndrome, androgen secreting tumors, acromegaly, insulin resistance, and around 3% of the hydrotism is because of the idiopathic causes. The signs of realization uh, are frontal balding, 
deepening of the voice, increase of muscle size and clitromegaly. So the evaluation of hirsutism, basically uh, androgen dependent hirsutism normally develops following puberty. Hairs are coarse and pigmented and normally grow in the male pattern. It is often accompanied by other evidence of androgen excess, such as acne, oily skin and hair, and male pattern alopecia. In the history, we should ask about the age and the rate of onset of hirsutism. Slowly progressive hirsutism following puberty is mostly because of the benign cause, whereas the rapid progressive hirsutism of the recent onset requires further immediate investigation to rule out an androgen secreting neoplasms. We should inquire about the menstrual cycle, particularly about the oligomenorrhea, presence of other evidence of hyperandrogenism like acne, bitemporal hair recession. Among the drug history, we should inquire about the progestins used in OCPs, uh, which may be an, um, androgenic, like the or not ethesterone. Treatments are often based on the subjective appearance, so the cautious if there is a great disparity between the subjective and objective assessment. In the physical examination, we should distinguish between the androgen dependent and androgen independent hair growth. Assess the extent and severity of hirsutism. For this, we use the Feynman Galway score, uh, which assesses the degree of hair growth in 11 different regions of the body. This provides a semi objective method of monitoring the disease, progression, and treatment outcome, but is mainly used in the research rather than in routine practice. Visualization should be looked for only in suspected cases of severe hyperandrogenism, acanthosis nigricans, and indicator of the insulin resistance and probable PCOs. Acanthosis nigricans, in, uh, like uh, it may occur insulin resistance and probable PCOs, and rare causes of hyperandrogenism, such as Cushing syndrome, anachronically should be ruled out. Androgen independent hair growth like the excess villous hair over the face and trunk, including forehead, it does not respond to anti-androgenic therapy. The causes of androgen-independent hair growth are drugs like phenytoin, cyclosporine, and glucocorticoids, denazole, anorexia nervosa, hypothyroidism, and familial causes. Among the laboratory investigation, we should check for the serum testosterone uh, which is measured in all female presenting with hirsutism. If it is less than five nanomole per liter, then the risk of sinister cause for hirsutism is low. For the investigation and management of individual uh, should be individualized. Pelvic ultrasound may be useful to diagnose PCOs. Idiopathic hirsutism refers to those with normal ovarian morphology, but this decision is not clear cut.